Bruchem Aboim. Thank you very much for coming. The uh, lecture tonight, the class will be on uh, affection. Remember when I was uh, a secular young man and I was dating, one of the opening lines I would give to a woman when I would meet them and didn't know who they were, I said, I'll bet you I know two things about you. Uh, one is that you're lonely and in search of love. And like they would be like amazed, you know, because we're all <laughs> lonely and in search of love. It's a very typical thing that we as human beings seem to be lacking, affection. And I like to come deal with it from two different angles, both a secular and a religious orthodox perspective. And the truth of the matter is that from both sides, just in the world in general, it seems like we don't, especially when it comes to children, that we don't hug them enough, that we don't tell them we love them enough. Um, we criticize a lot. I always say if you want to criticize anybody or anything, especially children, what you need to do is compliment twice as much as you criticize. Otherwise, every time you open your mouth, they just figure I did something wrong again and it has no meaning. But for some reason, people shy away from hugging, especially their own children, but even friends, and being warm. And yet we all crave it. Now, in a religious setting, it really, it's very confusing. How does, how does affection play into a religious life? Because, as I say all the time, the Torah is an instruction manual whereby we live. And yet there's really very little affection that is shown in the Torah. Um, and if it is, it's men hugging, even kissing, in a, in, a, in a, not a romantic way, but in a warm and giving way. But there's really no mention of husband and wife, father and child, especially father and daughter. In fact, the one time that the mention of a man kissing a girl is with Yaakov when he meets Rachel, his, his to-be bride, when she's with the sheep. And right away there seems to be a, a negativity in, that, in the fact that he kissed her at all. Because there is what we call the laws of yichud, the laws of uh, separating a woman from a man. Again, based on the laws of modesty, what we call sneas. And it goes so far, which is a lot of people find very strange. In fact, if you tell it to someone, their face will even contort. That the laws of yichud, the laws of separating, uh, not touching a woman, begin at the age of three. And when you tell someone why the age of three, and the rabbis say because a three-year-old girl is what we call royal labia, which means she's fit to have sexual relations, which again makes a person's face kind of contort. It doesn't seem like the thing that you want to hear. And yet, it's actually a very beautiful concept. You see, if a person follows an orthodox life style, there's no way in the world that your three-year-old daughter can be bothered by a pedophiler. Because after all, who's a pedophiler? A pedophiler is someone who loves your daughter. When you see him interact with her, it really warms your heart because he really loves her. He wants to hug her, he wants to kiss her, he wants to buy her things, he wants to be with her because he's a pedophiler. You see it because your mind doesn't work that way and you don't think that way. How can anybody be like that? But what the Torah says is you need to respect and suspect. That you need to always put up guards with things. After all, a young child does not understand. and needs to be protected. So if you follow the laws of the Torah, that uncle, that cousin, that friend who seems to adore your little girl can't touch her because she's three years old. And therefore this fence is put up that protects her because you have followed the laws of the Torah. But still, so that's a safeguard for a child, and that's great. But what about the idea of not hugging, not kissing, the opposite sex? 
it, it really becomes very difficult. I remember being at a house of mourning, and I knew the man who had died very well and his wife. And I remember seeing her sitting in the corner by herself, on a small stool, which is what we do, totally lost. And in my heart, I really wanted to go over there and hug her, because she needed to be hugged. And yet, we can't. So sometimes what we try to do and what we should do is verbally. You can hug a person with your words. You can caress a person with how you speak to them, how you look at them. And that sensitivity can still be passed on. And we, as religious Jews, really look at this relationship, especially between man, men and women, as very private. Yet, maybe it's too private, in the sense that I think children need to see that a father and a mother embrace. They need to see that a mother and a father have a communication that is warm, that is open, that is blending of one. And I think a lot of times that we pull back, even if there is a warmth between a husband and a wife. When they're around the children, many times, A, they forget, or they're too busy, or they are embarrassed, whichever it might be. But the truth is your children need to know, and not only that, they need to feel it. When I grew up, and I grew up in an age of macho man, and men, at least American men, didn't kiss. Uh, it was something that was strange. My grandfather, who came from Europe, uh, whenever I saw him, um, I was always told to give him a kiss. And I have to honestly admit uh, that it bothered me because I found it to be unnatural, uh, forced. And then I became a parent, and uh, whenever I see my 38-year-old son, I kiss him um, because it's a wonderful thing. And sometimes the things that we think about as a, as a child, as a young adult, that seems so strange and offish, as we get older and come to understand the world and life, how wonderful it is. Sephardim seemed to be the most warmest of all Jews. Um, when a Sephardi will meet you, he'll kiss you on both cheeks, not just one. And um, in Sephardi families, the the elder people kiss his hand. In fact, it says of the Arizal, a great Kabbalist, that every Friday before the Shabbat he would kiss his mother. Things that we forget. You know, affection doesn't stop. There's no, there's no age. There's no time limit. There's everyone, every parent loves it as much as they may say not. But a parent who doesn't hug his child, a, a, ch a child who doesn't still kiss his mother, no matter how old he is, is a fool. Because it's something that is so wonderful. A way to extend a warmth. And it, it's even interesting when we shake hands. You know, in olden times, people didn't shake hands because there was this concern about spiritual defilement, something that we don't have today. We don't have a temple. But this concept of spiritual defilement, what people did is they bowed. And that's how they acknowledged each other. People did not embrace, for the most part. People never shook hands. And yet today it's become very prevalent for people to shake hands. If you stop and think about it, whether someone's a righty or a lefty, the proper thing to do is to shake with your right hand. And we as Jews believe that the right side signifies chesed, kindness. So when two people shake, they both extend their right hand to each other and two forms of kindness embrace. In fact, when I shake a hand, I always put the, my left hand on top of my, the right hand. Because to me, that's a form of embracing. I was surprised because as, as I became more religious, more orthodox, I hug and kiss people all the time. In fact, someone taught me something which I find so sweet and I cherish. That when we hug someone, when we embrace, we usually put our head to the right side. So we actually lean to the left. And the other person's head's on our right shoulder. 
But I person mentioned to me if you when you hug someone if you put your head to the other side, his heart and your heart are up against each other. It's heart to heart. Instead of just embracing, it's actually heart to heart, which is just a little bit warmer. And that's really the idea. The idea is to not be embarrassed to express your feelings, to be an example for for children, be an example for your friends, be an example for everyone. That warmth needs to be expressed. There's so many, so many of us that are brought up in families that when we stop and think about it, our parents just never hugged us. Our parents never said they loved us. It's understood. Of course they did. And they did. But somehow, some way, in this life that just moves on, the hustle and bustle, there are things that we forget. Little things. And being able, you know, if you look at little babies, people are hugging them all the time. Who said that there's an age limit on this? I mean, there's an age limit on picking you up. <laughs> it might be a little difficult picking up an 18 or 25-year-old and walking around with them. But you can still hug them. They can still kiss you. You know, a greeting is, is, is great. Why shouldn't we acknowledge? Why should we be embarrassed? And we need to be examples for our children. It's, we're not supposed to be demonstrative in, in an overly familiar way as far as sexually is concerned. But a husband and a wife embracing, a husband and wife saying kind words to each other, even romantic words to each other. Although I have to say that whenever I wanted my daughter to do anything, all I had to do was kiss my wife. She said, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. You know, there's something about children finding it a little difficult. So you do have to restrain yourself a bit. But that should be the worst problem that you have is that your children saw you kissing your wife too much. Uh, that should be the complaint that, that, that they have. We need to know that if someone extends, you know, it's another thing. I'm not a rabbi. So I can deal with what we call gray area. Even though we as Orthodox Jews, I, I do not shake a woman's hand. I do not embrace a woman. And many times to my own chagrin, I'm not happy. I wish that I could. And occasionally I cheat. You know, if my niece has given, had a baby, you know, I hug her. You know, if I figure if that's the only thing they can burn me for in, heaven, in hell, then I'm, I'm all for it. That should be the only sin I go with. Um, you know, and I, I really regret, I was confused when I first became religious as to what to do with my daughter. And I have to honestly admit, I stopped hugging her and kissing her. And it was very wrong. It was very wrong. But we as Baal Tshuvas, new entries into the Orthodox world, we were confused as to what to do. So what I'm trying to do is to say that you need, need not worry about that. Hug your daughter. Kiss your daughter. Show her affection. That even though we're supposed to not to stay away from strange women, okay, that I get. And even then, sometimes there are exceptions. So if you, if you have an aunt that comes up and wants to hug you, don't freak out. Okay, let her hug you. You know, if someone extends their hand, if a woman extends her hand, don't do this because it, it's a bad impression. Shake her hand. There's something called covet abrius, showing respect for people. And when you embarrass someone, it's like murder. You drain, you, the blood rushes to their face and then drains. It's called shofek damen, to spill blood. That you need to show respect to people. So if someone doesn't know and they come to hug you, and, I've, and it happens, or they extend a hand, you shake it. If you can tell them that that's not what you do, great. In my family, I have part of my family that hugs me and part of my family that doesn't. You know, I'm not there to embarrass people. We do try to let people know. But the important thing, and if you walk away from that, be affectionate. And especially, you know, again, there's this thing even with men, there's nothing wrong with hugging a man, with giving a man especially a kiss on the cheek. Be a Sephardi, kiss both cheeks. You know, make sure that people know that you care. Make sure that people know that they lo you love them. Don't depend upon the fact that they know. Make them feel it. Don't, don't make it a secret. Don't keep it within you, especially your children. Make sure that you show them how important they are to you, how much you love them. And 
make them feel comfortable saying the word, I love you. You know, love is not a four-letter word. It's a very important thing that we need to share. And we need to be more open and more loving to the world in general. The reason why the temple was destroyed was because of sin aschinam, baseless hatred. What we need to do is go in the exact opposite direction and have what we call is avaschinam, baseless love. Just love a person because he's God's creation. And if you love God, how can you not love his children, and especially your own? Thank you very much for coming. God bless, and have a great Shabbat.